Okay, remember when you were a kid and you were in the car and you went down a hill and then back up a hill and it felt like you had a queasy feeling in your stomach? Um, this is the type of thinking that we're going to get into uh, when we start getting into these problems. It's, it's more difficult to um, just rely on formulas only. Because as we start doing these, you you got to start thinking about the actual situation that you're in. So, uh, driving in a car, you're going down a hill. Um, the bottom of the hill, because you're going down against the road here, it's going to seem like you weigh more. And as you go up, um, it's going to seem like you weigh less. So the normal force pushing back up on you here uh, from the road to the tires is going to feel is going to be more the normal force that is pushing up here is going to be less here because you're going up the hill now in fact if you go fast enough you could actually end up flying off the hill tangentially and like off to the side and we'll do some problems like that later so I'm going to present you guys with what the problem is. It says, what's the normal force, that's this, or the apparent weight at the bottom of a hill and at the top? Okay, we call the bottom position A. We'll call the top position B. Um, now, the radius of the hill, okay, that would be like this number here, is 100 meters. Okay, we can call the radius of the hill. hundred meters. So the hill, if it were to make a full circle like this, like this, it'd be a hundred meter radius. Okay, this from here to here is a hundred meters. Okay. Um, okay, so going down the hill, our apparent weight is going to be more. Going up the hill, the apparent weight is going to be less. Okay, so let's come up with some uh, way to express this okay, in terms of physics. So the normal force is going to be equivalent to the absolute value of the mass times the gravity. That's the weight plus the absolute value of the mass times the acceleration. So this thing's accelerating, and we're going to figure out um, how much additional force is added onto that. Okay? So this is for, uh, this formula is something that you want to write down. Normal force or apparent weight is equal to the absolute value of mass times gravity plus the absolute value of the mass times the acceleration of the object. That's for the bottom. For the top, we're going to come up with something a little different. The, the normal force is equivalent to the absolute value of the weight minus the absolute value of the mass times the acceleration. Okay, so because weight or mass times gravity is pulling down here, and now our acceleration vector is pointed this direction, so the normal force is going to be the result of, of these two combined, but this one acting in the opposite direction. Okay, now, these two formulas will help you. They won't be a, so, uh, a solve-it-all type of problem because you've got to really understand what we're looking at here. So the bottom of the loop, you apparently weigh more. Top of the loop, you apparently weigh less. Now, if this thing goes fast enough, you can actually weigh. The normal force will come out to be a negative number, which can't exist, and that would send the vehicle off the hill. Now, I'm going to look at a couple of renditions of this problem, and we're going to solve for this. Okay, so we're looking at the problem. I shrunk up this diagram a little so we could do some math down here. Um, okay, so the car is headed in this direction. 20 meters a second, it's going to apparently weigh more here and weigh less here. So our formulas will tell us that for the bottom position A at A, it's going to be um, the normal force 
or the apparent weight is going, if we had a scale under there, and the apparent weight is going to be mg plus ma, absolute values, okay? So let's figure it out. Normal force, mg, um, 1,500 kilograms times negative uh, 9.8 absolute value plus m a now we are going to need to substitute something here because the acceleration in this situation is one that is in uh, it's a centripetal acceleration so we know that a is v squared over r. Okay, so I'm gonna put a v squared over r right here. So let's write this out over here, give us some space. I'm gonna solve for this. Okay, so it's uh, 1500 times negative uh, 9.8. Absolute value of that is going to be 14,700. Remember, absolute value gives us a positive number. So that's just the weight of this object, okay. plus the mass, again, of the object times v squared over r. So 1,500 uh, is the mass times v squared over r. So we've got v, figure v out, 20 meters per second. We'll where this unit right here over the r of 100 meters. I'm going to clean this up a little bit. Plus the absolute value of uh, 1,500 uh, times square this 400 over 100. Again, going to clean it up a little more. Four hundred over one hundred is four. Okay, so multiply that together. Fifteen hundred times four. That's our acceleration. So we've got the normal force on this object going down is fourteen seven hundred newtons plus 6,000 newtons for a grand total of 20,000. Okay, the normal force pushing back up, uh, adding these two vectors up would be 20,700 newtons. So we added an additional 6,000 newtons of force on this car going down the loop. Now, we did most of the work here, so I'm going to apply that to situation uh, B, where we're at the top of the hill. Okay. Once we have all this figured out, we can simply solve for the apparent weight at the top of the hill. Okay. Instead, we're going to look at this. We're going to say mg minus ma. We've got these two numbers already. Remember, so the, let's look here, mg, this is ma, we found, uh, very simply, 14,700 minus 6,000 newtons. So 14,700 minus 6,000 newtons. Okay, number force. 8,700. Okay, so yeah, it's the car's gonna it's gonna weigh a lot less up there. It's gonna apparently weigh a lot less up there. Um, and the closer we get our acceleration to 9.8, or centripetal acceleration to 9.8, the closer this gets to zero. Once this goes into the negative, so once the normal force is in the negative number, if normal force is negative, then um, we can't have a negative normal force. Um, and, and so this will mean that the car, in this situation, the car 
fly off of the track or the road. So the normal force is not going to be negative because we just subtracted a 6,000. Had it been bigger than this number, it would be a situation of the car go flying off, this, uh, off of the track. Okay? So there's a problem on apparent uh, weight or the normal force felt in a car going down and up a hill.